All right, let's say we know the value of secant. We know secant x is negative 2. Um, secant can be negative. Remember, secant is 1 over cosine. Um, cosine is the x value, so these are negative on the left side. So it's in one of these two quadrants. And then it tells me that the angle is actually in between negative pi over 2 and pi, so we know it's in the second quadrant which makes that secant is negative there. Um, so let's find tangent and cotangent. Um, so let's figure out first, are they positive or negative in this quadrant? So how can we figure that out? So they both are sine over cosine, so let's go through those. So cosine is positive, cosine is negative, cosine is negative, cosine is positive, right? Because cosine is left and right. So right is positive, left is negative. Um, sine is positive up and down, so sine is positive up, negative down. So sine will be negative on the two bottom ones. And so, um, let's see, in the second quadrant, since tangent and cotangent are fractions of sine and cosine, um, they would be negative in this quadrant because we have opposite signs. So these are negative in quadrant two. Um, so let's use identities to figure these out. Um, so we know secant x is negative two. Um, I think we have an identity with tangent and secant. So I'm going to jump into this identity just because it involves tangent and secant. So 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared x. So tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. And then tangent would then be plus or minus square root. Secant x minus 1, right? We can square root both sides. And then the reason we decided what symbol it was is now we know it's the negative case because of the quadrant. So if we were in a different quadrant, it might be positive. So we'll just go ahead and plug in. So we're going to get negative for quadrant 2. Secant is negative 2 squared minus 1. So we get negative square root 3. All right, we get 4 minus 1. Cool. And then cotangent, there's lots of identities, but we... The easiest one here would probably be 1 over tangent, since we already know that value. Would be 1 over tangent. So 1 over negative root 3, and we'll just go ahead and rationalize that. So we get negative root 3 over 3. Um, so step one is really to figure out if it's positive or negative, because if we were in a different quadrant, um, they might have different relationships in terms of signs. And then picking an identity that only uses what you have, right? We had other identities with tangent, but we didn't know sine and cosine. So this one was most useful in this example. Um, let's go over domain and range, and then when we graph, it'll make more sense. So domain of tangent and secant are the same because they both have cosine in the denominator. So tangent is sine over cosine, secant is 1 over cosine. So they both have issues when cosine is 0, so cosine x can't equal 0. Um, and those were at the pi's over 2. So remember, um, cosine again is the x value, so cosine will be 0 on the y-axis. So that'll be pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. So it'll be all the pi over 2's with odd on top. So it turns out that we can write that as x can't equal, and then to make an odd number, we can say 2n plus 1, because 2n would be even, times pi over 2. So 2n plus 1, n is anything, any um, integer. So if we plug in 0, we get pi over 2. If we plug in 1, we get 3 pi over 2. So 2n plus 1 is our just way of saying an odd number. Um, let's look at cotangent and cosecant. 
Um, cotangent and cosecant I put together because they have the same issue with sine being on the bottom. Cosine x over sine x, one over sine x. So these have the issue where sine x can't be zero. And then sine equals zero um, on the y-axis, um, on the x-axis, sorry, because it's the up and down. So this would be zero pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. So x can't equal zero, pi, two pi, so on. So we just call that n pi, right? One pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. All of those will give us issues with domain. And then range, it turns out that um, tangent and cotangent is all real numbers. So when we graph, we'll see how, why this works. And then secant and cosecant are a little weird um, since they're one over cosine and one over sine. Um, so if we think about cosine, the absolute value of cosine is less than or equal to one. So then one over cosine would be greater than or equal to one. So it actually does the opposite. So basically it's anything from negative infinity to negative one up to one to infinity. And all of this will make more sense when we graph. Um, I'm just kind of giving us all the information before we graph and then I'll piece it together in the graphs. So this is just a summary to help us graph. Um, we're not masters at it. The graphs I think will answer all this. Um, the period, remember that's the length of one cycle, will be pi for tangent and cotangent and it'll be two pi um, for cosecant and secant, which is the same as sine and cosine. So right now it's just information. I promise you we'll piece this together. Um, and then most of them are odd functions. Um, tangent, cotangent, and cosecant are all odd. So they're symmetric about the origin. And then secant is even, it's symmetric about the y-axis. So let's peek at the graphs on the next page and then we'll graph on our own. So let's check out the graphs. So tangent and cotangent kind of look like x cubed or repeated forever and ever. Um, notice the domain is all real numbers because it goes up to infinity. I'm just kind of summarizing what we talked about on the previous page. Um, you can see the period, which is the length of one cycle. The distance is pi, right? The distance is pi. That's, the period is the length of a cycle. So before the shape repeats itself, um, what else did we cover? We covered domain, so you'll see asymptotes on these tangent and cotangents, um, where I said the domain didn't exist. So at tangent, we have asymptotes at those odd pi's over two. And that was because x can't equal two n plus one pi over two from domain, because that's when cosine is zero, basically. And then for cotangent, you'll see it at the pi values because x couldn't equal n pi. And that's why we have asymptotes at pi, 2 pi, and so on. And then let's look at, the way I like to graph secant and cosecant is I really graph sine and cosine first. So secant is 1 over cosine. So what I do is I graph the cosine graph. So remember, cosine starts at 1, it goes down, up, so that's cosine. And you'll notice kind of this interesting relationship, maybe. Um, secant makes these like parabola-like shapes every time cosine comes up, because it's 1 over this number, so it's basically doing the reciprocal. And it has asymptotes every time cosine is 0. And then it just kind of makes the reciprocal shape, basically. So it has asymptotes when cosine is zero. Um, I don't really, if I have to graph secant, I don't really, I graph cosine and then just kind of draw the reciprocal. And it just keeps going and going and repeats forever. And then one cycle would be two of these shapes because they're different. So that's one cycle.
Um, and then similar for cosecant, right? We have one cycle is the same size, two pi. Um, if you, you were to draw sine, sine starts at zero, goes up, comes down and up. And it's just basically the reciprocal. All right, so notice we have asymptotes every time so sine is zero. So I, if I had to sketch this from scratch, I would sketch sine and then just draw these like parabola-like shapes above it. So we'll sketch some of these from scratch in the next video and hopefully that'll help us. Um, but I just wanted to give us the basic shape in this video. So we just want to be familiar with the basic shape and I'll show you how to graph in the next video.